In this video, I want to show you how to make a battery for any smartphone. But first, the disclaimer. What I am about to show you, I do not recommend you to replicate. This is out of the question. Nobody in the right mind should do such a thing. And it's very dangerous. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this to recover data from one device. Second, subscribe to this channel and like this video. So let's get started. You will notice that this smartphone does not have a battery. This is because the original battery is inflated and can no longer fit in the smartphone. Theoretically, it could, <laughs> but that would not end well. In this video I want to show you how to solve this issue. We must first find a battery that is the approximate size of the original battery. It is important that it is not larger than the original one. First I check the battery of Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini. It could be used, but I look for a better one, because I have a larger selection of batteries available. Next I take a battery from the same manufacturer, but from another model. As you can see in this comparison, the right is the original one and the left is a battery from another model. The difference is that the battery on the left is about 2 mm shorter and maybe 1 mm wider. And you will also notice that the polarity is not the same, as well as the position of the battery contacts. But I'm worried about that 1 mm wider issue. It's not a problem if the battery can fit inside the phone. But in this case it cannot fit because of the width. So I will try with the next battery. I compare the next battery and as you can see by the width it fits into the device. In length it cannot fully be inserted. This is because of the upper plastic on the battery that has certain mechanisms that block it from going in. This is a protection mechanism to prevent people to put any battery into any smartphone. But that will not be a problem for us. I will show you later in this video. And here you can see the batteries are of two different models. Don't let the battery model bother you. And even the manufacturer, as long as the battery physically fits. And in this case, the position of plus and minus is not on the same side, as are the battery contacts. Now that I have decided which battery to use, I take the old inflated battery first. I need to remove the label from the battery. As you can see, I removed the label very carefully. The next step is to separate the plastic on which the battery contacts are located. The plastic is usually glued with double-sided tape. It is important to approach this endeavor with high caution, because batteries do not forgive mistakes. I use a plastic tool to separate these two elements. I advise not to use metal tools. I carefully and gradually separate the plastic with the battery contacts. You will notice that the glue is not the only thing holding the plastic to the battery. Under the plastic there are also two conductors. These are actually the positive and negative terminals that come out from the battery cell and are soldered to the electronics located in the plastic part of the battery. I carefully separate the plastic from the cell and trying not to break the positive and negative terminals. Also be careful not to cause a short circuit. Now I take the sticker to remind myself which contact is positive and which negative. Yet we will not trust our own eyes and we will check this with a multimeter. The orientation of the battery is such that the contacts are on the left side and the far left contact is the positive terminal, as you can see. We will now compare it to the battery we want to use as a replacement. And as you can see the replacement battery is dead, I mean zero. I will use this universal charger, but before I do, let me clean the contacts a little bit with tweezers. I do not recommend cleaning the contacts like this. If I do so, it doesn't mean it's right. I'm currently not in the mood to do it right. <laughs> uh, I mount the battery on a universal charger and plug it in. While the new battery is charging, I slowly disassemble the old one. I slowly disassemble the plastic from the battery. Once again, I assure the polarity of the contacts. Then I check the polarity of the terminals which coming out of the cell. So it's the same. The left terminal on the cell is the positive one and the right one is the negative. Since I want to use the plastic from the old battery with electronics and battery contacts, I need to separate it from the cell. I will do it the simplest way positive, as I will cut the terminals exiting the cell. The lower I cut the better, because that will make the contacts stay longer on the plastic side of things. I will cut using choppers. The cut must be made quickly, because there is a high probability that there will be short circuits between the positive and negative terminals. It must be clear to you that the complete lining of the cell is most probably positive or negative terminal. You will also notice that the negative terminal which exits the cell is shorter than the positive terminal. I will now use a measuring instrument to confirm my thesis. 
you see that the complete cell is actually a positive terminal. The video didn't really show it that well, but when I cut the negative terminal with chops and at the same time touching the cell envelope, there were tiny sparks, which is in our domestic jargon called kurzschluss, or simply a short. Now I'm going to take the double-sided glue off the plastics, just enough to free the contacts. Let's check if our new battery charged a little bit. Here we see when we position the battery that the contacts are on the right, the left battery contact is a positive. It could be said to be quite the opposite from the original battery, but that will not be a problem for us. Let's peel the new battery now. I check the polarity again, and on the new battery I remove the plastic from the cell. Here even more carefully because this battery is working. In this case we don't need the plastic, because we will use the one from the original battery. But I don't want to damage the cell, and I also need to leave as much insulation as possible on the battery cell. And in this case I want the terminals on the cell to be as long as possible, while on the old battery I wanted to keep the terminals as long as possible on the plastic. But in this case it didn't work out <laughs> with the negative terminal. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I checked the polarity for the thousandth time, now I'm trying to imagine what that might look like. Since I might need a conductor for one of the terminals, I cut off the excess pieces from the old battery, just in case. The next thing you need is a soldering iron. In this case I use one that I paid only a couple bucks. You will notice that in my videos I try to use as cheap equipment as possible. For the simple reason of showing that one does not always have to have the high-end soldering iron costing hundreds of bucks, especially in situations like this, where the most common soldering iron really can do all the work. <laughs> and as you can see the soldering iron holder is my padlock. I try to melt some tin to check if the soldering iron has warmed up enough. I take the new battery, I measure the position of the contacts once more and position it so that the positive terminal exiting the cell be on the same side as the positive terminal on the electronics of the battery contained in the plastic. Then I use plastic clamps to hold the battery upright. I carefully put some tin on the negative terminal on the battery cell. It is necessary in this case to pay attention for the tin to be soldered exclusively to the negative terminal without it reaching for the cell envelope, which as we have established is also the positive terminal. I hope there is no need to explain why. I also apply tin to the negative terminal located on the battery electronics. I rotate the electronics and also apply tin to the positive terminal of the electronics. With tweezers I adjust the position of the positive terminal on the battery cell. Then I apply tin to the positive terminal of the cell as well. And of course I add more tin to the negative terminal just in case. I put the electronics in position so that the negative terminal on the electronics and the negative terminal of the cell align so they touch exactly where the tin is. Then I use the soldering iron to heat the tin to the melting point. I decided to solder the negative terminal first since they are shorter because it is easier for me to solder longer positive terminals later. I also solder the positive terminal as well. Of course I don't waste time and immediately insert the battery into the cell phone to see if it fits. Of course the battery is a little longer by a quarter of a millimeter, just as the thickness of the plastic on the bottom side of the battery. I just peel it off and still decide to measure the battery voltage first to determine the functionality of the battery. Unfortunately, I did not record the measurement result, but since the battery is not charged enough, first we will let it charge a little bit more with the universal charger. While charging, I check the voltage with a measuring instrument. The moment of truth has come. I insert the battery into my smartphone and it fits like molded. I connect the charger, but obviously the battery voltage is not high enough to get the smartphone up and running from a standstill. I put it back on the universal charger, the charge indicator shows that it is charging. After a certain time I check the voltage again with the instrument, all that while the battery was charging. I do this by measuring the cell wall, which is how we establish the positive terminal of the battery, and between the cell and the plastic I measure the negative terminal, and we see it slowly approaching 3.4 volts. Now I have decided to measure the voltage direct directly on the battery contacts. I will do this by placing two tweezers on the probes of the instrument to serve as an extension to reach the battery contacts. And we see that we have crossed the 3.4 volts. I think that should be enough. I put the battery back in my cell phone, connect it to the charger and it's not working again. I just thought so. 
and it starts to charge. It showed uh, 0% and stopped. It's important to point out that the battery I've used is quite a bit old and not used for a long time. Probably the smartphone is not able to overcome it with its keen charge. <laughs> I decided again to connect it to a universal charger and charge it a little bit more. After about 10 minutes, I tried it again and excellent, it shows 2%. I turn on the device, I let it go to standby, I take out the battery, put it back in and let it charge. Then I use the phone with an active SIM card, maybe a day and a half. And it still says there are 10 more hours of battery left. I'm not sure how, how accurate this prediction is, but anyways. Here below you can see that the smartphone was in relatively active use. I do a graceful shutdown, I take out the battery to put back the original sticker, but first I use fireproof tape to fix the plastic to the cell to hold it tight. I put back the original label to the original position and additionally tape it fireproof tape and turn on the device. I have to tell you, it's been more than six months since I made this battery. The same still works, although I do not recommend making such alterations for, for the purpose of everyday use, except for data recovery or some urgent necessities. Um, that was it. If you like this video, like it. If not, then don't. If you have questions, ask in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that bell to be notified when there is a new video on the channel. Hepic is also present on other social networks. Links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice one. Until the next video.